So before I get into this video, I just want to say that this video is fair use. All the media used in this video is used for criticism, review, or in a transformative way. All the information I present is public information and everything else is alleged, my opinion, or a joke. So I'm quickly going to just show you this video. I don't really want to explain it. It's, I found it on Marky's channel and I'm, it's just, I... What's better than that? We are all people. All of you are my family. All of you are my family. I love each and every one of you. I cry at night because I feel your pain. I feel the pain. I feel the pain of black people. I feel the pain of white people. I feel the pain of innocent cops. I feel the pain. We're all scared. Black, white, cop, doesn't matter. We're all scared. We're living in fear. We got to stop living in fear. I am not your enemy. You are not my enemy. We have to share this land no matter what. By the end of the day, we have to share this land no matter what. I'm here for you. I'm here with you. I'm not angry at none of you. I love all of y'all. I don't care if you 5'2. I don't care if you're a seven footer. I don't care if you're dark skin. I don't care if you're light skin. I don't care if you're white. Mask or not, you are or not. You are my family and I love you and I respect you. And I want to understand y'all. I want to understand all of you. I want to. I deeply want to understand you. I would love to come to your house. I would love to meet your kids. I would love to meet your family. I would love to see the best side of everybody here. This is not the best side of everybody here. I would love to see the best side of everybody here. Then you can change the whole perspective of how you view someone because of their size, because of how you see them in different life. Someone might have a bad day and you say they're a bad person. No, no, no. We all got bad days. We all got bad days. We got to stop judging people only on our bad days because we all have them some degree. How are you on your good day? Do you want to make a stand? Do you want to make a change? Because if we charge you and you charge us, what is that really doing? What is that really doing? Come on, what are you doing? What are you doing? Fuck you! Fuck you! What the fuck do you do? Are you fucking kidding me? For what? For what? Freedom of speech! No! He was trying to sympathize and talk to police or the SWAT team, whatever the fuck. I don't even know. Do they look like the fucking SWAT team, you stupid bitch? But he's trying to talk with like law people and he just got arrested. If you listen to the clip, you'll notice that he was trying to actually talk to them and actually understand them. He was just saying very like nice things that they honestly didn't need to hear because because they clearly didn't deserve it anyway. And I just, why? In what world would that be the ideal reaction to that? And people have been saying shit like the riots are bad, they're not doing anything, they're just painting Black Lives Matter in a bad light and all this rioting and violence is just so awful. First of all, you didn't seem to give a fuck when it was happening to black people, but now that people are doing it to police and getting mad at police, it's a problem now. Why? You have to dominate. If you don't dominate, you're gonna look like a bunch of jerks. You have to get much tougher. You're gonna get overridden. You have to dominate. You have to arrest people and you have to try people. And they have to go to jail for long periods of time. If you weak and don't dominate your streets, they're going to stay with you until you finally do it. And you don't want that. You better tough enough. What they did in Minneapolis was incredible. They, they went in and dominated. And they just walked right down the street, knocking them out with tear gas, tear gas. Those guys, they were running. We're strongly looking for arrests. We need law and order in our country. We need law and order. Again, this call is not intended for post purposes and is off the record. You may disconnect. Like, protests and riots are bad. How do you think women first got their rights? How do you think the LGBT people first got their rights? Because calm conversations and peaceful protests clearly don't work. Because people won't care. How did women first start getting rights? They rioted. How did the LGBTQ community first started getting treated like basic human fucking beings? They throw a brick at a police station. Things like this work because privileged people don't give a fuck until it inconveniences them. Privileged people don't give a fuck that black people are getting killed for literally no reason. They care that they can't go to their local Target because it's been burnt down. 
To everyone claiming violence never works, tell me, how exactly do you think slavery ended? The slaves sang kumbaya until the plantation owners felt guilty? A government that can't mobilize to house and feed us during a pandemic, but can mobilize to beat us whenever we rise up, tells you where exactly their priorities are. So you're telling me the internet surveillance is tight enough for police to burst into protesters' homes and admit them to psych wards for radical tweets, but not to catch the blog's social media posts and the manifestos of white supremacist mass murders before they kill. The two at the top murdered a combination of 32 people. The two at the bottom sold illegal cigarettes and wrote a bad check. They couldn't even stop doing police brutality at the police brutality protest. Ripped off a hijab, kicked a pregnant woman and made her have a miscarriage, maced a child, threw a woman down so hard she had a seizure and yet they considered heroes. The first Pride was a riot led by queer people of colour. If you refuse to support Black Lives Matter today, don't celebrate Pride tomorrow. I don't get how white people will watch a million movies like Star Wars, Hunger Games and whatever bullshit movie about people taking a stand for change, but then gasp for themselves and turn their nose upward when they see actual black protesters fighting for our right to live. So this is just going to be a quick message to the protesters because obviously y'all got to stay safe. The safest place to organise is on Discord rather than do- I mean I would suggest not doing anything online whatsoever but like obviously organising you have to do it some way to like actually make it a thing. But like don't click on things on Facebook if you see a protest don't say oh yeah I'm attending that don't go maybe I'll you know those buttons that you click on Facebook don't do that don't publicly say that you are attending any protests wear face masks not only for corona protection because you know that's a whole apparently Ebola is a thing now again but yeah wear face masks for protection against corona but also because of facial recognition you don't want to get recognized obviously don't wear contact lenses they are now tear gassing protesters so if you wear contact lenses the tear gas can make them stick to your eye and make you blind I would highly suggest wearing some sort of protection on your face area in general, especially your eyes, because there has been a homeless man that was shot in the face. I believe it was in the eye, but he was like, this, it was a lot. But yeah, police are being very, very violent. So please make sure that your face, especially your eyes, are protected. So happy that police have gas masks. It'd be so tragic if people blinded them by using water balloons with paint, especially paint designed to stick on plastic, forcing them to either take the mask off or leave because they can't see. I'd hate that so much. It would also be really annoying if protesters wore heat-resistant gloves to throw back the hot tear gas canisters. It would be further shame if people started covering cameras as seen in Hong Kong, with protesters using poles and rakes to lift cardboard boxes over security cameras, blinding drone optics with laser pointers and flooding police-run reporting apps with junk data. It'd be a shame if the protesters noticed that plainclothes cops can be identified a number of ways, such as wearing steel-toed boots, an armband or wristband of a particular colour, driving white, black or dark blue cars with concealed lights, or having the outline of cuffs visible in the back pocket or the bumps of an armour vest shoulder strap under their shirt. It would be a shame if the people behind the shield wall held up umbrellas so that tear gas canisters fired over the heads of the front line will be bounced away. It would be a shame if protesters began constructing imp- Improvised armor vests out of duct tape, hardback books, and ceramic tiles. It would be a shame if protesters started wearing safety glasses, hard hats, respirators, and gardening gloves, all of which can be found at the same hardware stores as plywood. It would be a shame if they started using traffic cones, the kind without the hole in the top, upside down buckets, or other improvised lids to contain tear gas by placing them over the canisters. Police scanners are legal to own in the US, allowing them to learn where police are moving and what routes they intend to take. It would be a shame if they discovered that these scanners can be used to send as well as receive, allowing them to flood the scanner frequencies with noise. Ignore the plywood stuff because apparently plywood isn't going to do anything and all it's going to do is splinter on impact and you take a hit to the top or bottom edge it's going to wrench your wrist and fuck it up hard at best so if you find some alternative to this that would actually work really well it would be good to share also don't ask cops to like do anything with the protesters don't ask them to like kneel with you or like stand with you or walk with you and stuff like that because they will often retaliate violently after it after the media has gotten pictures of that there are good cops and stuff like that for example NYPD have taken a knee in solidarity with protesters. They beat the living shit out of us one hour after this. Portland PD agreed to take a knee with protesters. The media got their photos in. Immediately, gas masks were put on and gassed an entire park. A couple of people in Orlando police knelt down to pray with demonstrators for George Floyd and everyone hurting right now. Literally 45 minutes later, they maced us in the face with the crime of standing in their vicinity. This woman named Maxie Greenwood ruined a George Floyd memorial. She owns a business in Huntington Beach called Party Max Event Services. Staged. Do not do this! Then, then put up your own stuff. This is not. This is my freedom of speech. This is my freedom. This is my freedom of speech. This was staged by Antifa and George Soros. We don't need this violence. Oh my God! Don't need violence. You are being violent. Get out right now. Get the world. Get this violence out of here.
Lowe's just donated 25 million to help minority owned businesses reopen. Home Depot founder donated 7 million to Trump. Go to Lowe's. Also, while we're shitting on Home Depot, the founder of Lowe's is one of the only black CEOs of a Fortune 500 company. Liga has also been supportive of the Black Lives Matter movement, saying, We stand with the black community against racism and inequality. There is much to do. We will donate $4 million to organizations dedicated to supporting black children and educating all children about racial equality. They also took all Lego sets with either police or the White House in them. Ben and Jerry's, the ice cream company, also released a statement. Ripped to Sarah Grossman, she passed after police sprayed her protest group with tear gas, triggering her asthma, eventually leading to her death at Columbus Hospital. Seattle police maced a child, then refused to give his badge number. His name is Jared Campbell. His badge number is 8470. Contact the C Seattle Police Department. Call this number or email opa at seattle.gov because who the fuck maces a child? It's just crazy to me that people see shit like Black Lives Matter or Stop Raping Women and their first reaction is to argue. Like, bro, you're the problem. Here are some other cases that are a bit concerning. Teenager Lakeith Smith is sentenced to 65 years in prison for the death of his friend who was shot and killed by an Alabama police officer. His friend, Adonte Washington, was killed by police that night, shot four times for allegedly brandishing a gun. Yet under Alabama's felony murder rule, a class A felony, Smith was not only tried as an adult, but also charged with Adonte's death, even though it was a cop's bullet that ended the 16-year-old's life. A grand jury declined to prosecute the still unnamed officers involved in the killing. Lakeith was a 15-year-old child scared to death. He did not participate in the act that caused the death of Adonte. He never shot anybody. There was a 12-year-old girl who was raped by 11 men in Jagawa. I don't know how to say that. Reopen this case too. Tamla Horsford, a 40 year old mother of five children, went to an all adult sleepover, which included seven white women and three men at a home in Georgia. The next morning, she was found dead in the backyard, and now her case is receiving new scrutiny after Black Twitter spawned hashtag Tamla Horsford and is asking federal law enforcement officials to get involved. She was found face down in the backyard by the homeowner's aunt at 7.30 a.m. on November 4th, 2018, but police were not called to the scene until 9.30 a.m. It was initially reported that Horsford suffered injuries to her head and face. The case becomes even stranger when another person at the party, Jose Barrera, a former probation officer for the county court, lost his job because of improper use of the county database. Barrera is the boyfriend of the woman who owned the house where Horsford's body was found and is also considered a witness in the investigation to Horsford's death. My name is Julius Jones. I've been incarcerated for the last 18 years. The victim was suburban, white, gunned out by an African-American male. Julius Jones is ending his teenage years with a murder rap. The Richard deserves a death penalty. My brother's innocent. I don't think he was a killer. These people set me up. Julius was not a choir boy. Kids like to have nice stuff and do harebrained things to get. The gunman was wearing a red bandana. The police never tested for DNA. There was a fear at that time of dangerous young black youth. The only way you're going to stop crime is to start punishing the people who commit it. This young man has never been given a fair chance. I'm a dead man breathing right now. But there is hope. The Last Defense, Tuesday, July 10th on ABC. So I don't know if I'm allowed to show this video, but basically um, police pushed this old man onto the ground where he hit his head and blood basically poured out of his head. And then they went on to harass this other protester there. And somebody had the absolute audacity, obviously this person's white, just throwing that out there. And they said, you do realize curfew had been put in place. The old man was refusing to move as well as getting up close to the cop. All the other cop did was push him back, a little push that most people would be able to handle. The old man only fell because he was old. It's not the cop's fault. The man should have never been there in his health. Are you absolutely fucking kidding me? In regards to the curfew, this isn't specific to this case, but there were videos on TikTok and tweets on Twitter about how police were blocking protesters' way to, like, leave the protest, but it was also, like, five minutes to, like, the curfew, so they literally couldn't leave. You know that the curfew was a bad idea, right? You know that- Why you like this? I'm just- I don't know how to say- Like, I'm- s Are you dumb? And you're seriously saying it was the old man's fault that he was pushed, hit his head, and had blo He could be dead, for all we know. He could be dead. And you're saying it was his fault for being there because he's old. 
Should that not give you more insight on how serious this is? If a fucking baby pisses me off, and oh, let's make it more similar. If an old man is pissing me off, it is up to me, it is my job to not punch that old man in the head and therefore cause a concussion or some shit. It is not his fault to stop pissing me off and my job to not injure him to the point where blood is pouring out of his head regardless of whether or not he was an old person police shouldn't be acting that way police shouldn't just push an old man over and then move on over to the next victim i went on a story and it was all about like defending police and all that shit and how protesters were being disgusting and riots were wrong and like it's violent towards the police and all that shit so i just think it's kind of funny because if it was like protesters who pushed a policeman and blood started pouring from his head i don't know why a policeman wouldn't have all the gear that they normally wear to the protests and riots and shit like that but like hypothetically if it was a policeman that got like hurt she would be all over there she would be like oh my god this is so wrong how do you do this blm is bad so yeah literally shut up you look so stupid here's a thread of comparisons between the protests when white people wanted haircuts and didn't want to be in quarantine and when black people wanted to not get killed also notice the difference in language when Donald Trump addresses the two different protests. In regards to white people protesting due to coronavirus, he said the governor of Michigan should give a little and put out the fire. These are very good people, but they are angry. They want their lives back again safely. See them, talk to them, make a deal. And in regards to the black people with the Black Lives Matter protests, he says these thugs are dishonoring the memory of George Floyd and I won't let that happen. Just spoke to Governor Tim Walz and told him that the military is with him all the way. Any difficulty and we will assume control, but when the looting starts, the shooting starts. Thank you. This was posted by Jamila Jamil and it says same crime, same courtroom, same judge, same criminal history, 1300% difference in sentencing. A white man named Chase was, was involved with an armed robbery at 19 with no contest plea, one misdemeanor prior and the total points of 138.2. He got two years in county. Lamar Lloyd was involved with armed robbery at age 21 with no contest plea, one misdemeanor act prior and total points of the exact same 138.2. He got 26 years in prison. There were both sentenced by the same judge, Judge Sherwood Boa Jr. If my son went for some skittles and didn't return, or played in the park and didn't return, went for a jog and didn't return, or reached for his license and didn't return, and with his last dying breath called out my name, I would burn down the damn city too. 